Sachiko. Did I pronounce that correctly? Uh -huh. Very good. Sachiko. This is okay. like a, the ancient traditional mm -hmm. Japanese stitching method. Very simple stitching. Um, this is to give an example of maybe, you know, some people might be interested in doing this in the future. Um, the origin, origin was that they stitched, patched, worked uh, indigo pieces of cotton. Okay. And then the firemen and the fishermen would have quilted jackets. So they made these really simple stitching to stitch the layers of fabric. But you know, mostly in the winter country, they get snowed in a lot. So um, the women would come up with different designs during the winter when they're snowed in. Then when the thaw came, they would show each other different villagers, you know, what kind of designs they came up with. You know, when I was in Japan, uh -huh. I was over in the Naira district, one of Naira, mm -hmm. and Isaichi. I think it's pronounced Iskaichi, that's where I was staying in the uh -huh. little area. And I saw some of it, but I didn't see, the, the stitching is really unique. Well, is it hard? Is it no, it's just running stitch, it's just in and out, and that's all it is. Now, inside I quilted it, so you can't really see it's a different piece of fabric on the inside, but it's basically following the line, and it just creates these pretty patterns. Oh, so you can just buy the purse? Do you buy the purse, or do you We create? just make the purse because um, this is just, well, this is denim and fabric, actually, right. really thin denim fabric, but um, traditionally it was done on indigo. Nowadays they do it on different types of fabric and use different colored threads, so you're not limited to just indigo. Um, these so you are have the beauty and simplicity. Yeah, and then yeah. these are the special needles. They have to be super sharp needles, and I don't even use the traditional sashiko thread. I just use embroidery thread. So I and I just made myself a little container to hold the special needles. That's all. That would be the first thing we should do in the class, huh? Make that for the needles. Yes, yeah, so nice. you don't lose your needle. Yeah. Okay. And this? Yeah, um, I'm going to be teaching a workshop on hand building clay, and I want to incorporate the plant with the pot because I think that's more interesting. It gives you a challenge also. So, for example, you can make something whimsical and with lots of color, like this person, and then this can be the hair. Or you can make something a little bit more sophisticated like this to match the um, succulent right here. But, and they're really simple. They're just basically slabs and pinch pots. That's all you need to do. Um, my technique is called the smush method. I just take clay and I smush it together and then I carve or paint or something like that. I'm not as careful and precise. Like when I made this, I had to demo this so I had to make it precise and make these little pieces and put it together carefully. But usually I just smush things together. And sometimes they get wonky, but I work with that and I, I like that technique better than... Mm -hmm. What kind of method do you use to you make this one? fire this up? Oh, okay. So with clay, you know, it's wet first. So this is a slab and I roll it out and then I just formed it around a, a wad of paper, newspaper. And then I stuck this, I made it like a pinch pot, and I just stuck that on top, and I blended it. And then once when it was a little bit drier, I painted it with what we call underglazes. And I, I like to say those are uh, colored clay. And uh, I painted it, and I carved some of that uh, colored clay out, and then I fired it. And then I came back and put a clear glaze on, which is really like liquid glass. And then I fire that so now it's, you know, waterproof and everything. I think this would be nice. It looks like some of the styles we have today for the hair, huh? <laughs> and put it right here. That's well, nice. this, is, this is an orchid plant with tendrils and I wanted it to hang down. Mm -hmm. So I made, I made a, you know, kind of a rustic looking thing. And I did glaze it, but I rubbed a lot of the glaze off here so that the raw clay shows. Okay. Yeah, just to, just to add interest. And this one is just pure raw clay. It's not even glazed. So I and just you carved fired it. that? Mm -hmm. this you is fired, fired all of this, right? Mm -hmm. These okay. are all fired, yeah. And this is just raw clay, and I just carved it and formed it, and no glaze on it. Kind of like a terracotta pot, but it's okay. got a different design. All right. And this? This is printmaking. Now, originally, you know, they used wood, wood to um, carve out and make wood blo uh, block printing, but it's kind of hard on the fingers and on the hands. So now they have these like linoleum blocks or rubber, rubber blocks and they're so easy to carve. So I just made some samples here and on this one I just wanted to see how detailed I can get this uh, rubber block to work. And it's pretty good. 
So these are just sample prints I did. I also did it on very thin paper, and I thought that was kind of cool, you know? Okay, so this started from something like this. It's just, just the plain, block like that. And that from that you mm -hmm. get something like, oh, like this? Mm -hmm. So this okay. one goes to do this one. Now you get it in the reverse. Uh -huh. And I did a yeah. test on this, you know, just on a piece of notebook paper. Then I did a couple more tests. I even tried it on a paper towel just to see how the texture of the paper towel will look. That's pretty good. And it's a simple method. You just need this. And then these, you know, you have the little carving blades in here. And then you just Where do you take. Where you get those? Oh, you just get these at binders or any art Binder. supply. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. They're not that expensive. It's real basic. It's not like super expensive carving tools. And then you just take the water-based ink and then with the brayer, put it on. Throw the paper on top. And I do this with this and rub it. Now sometimes if you want the background detail, more of the background detail to pick up, I kind of like do this. So okay. each print is really a work of art because each print's going to come out differently. And then you can also uh, use color inks. You can also uh, do several prints where you have different sections with different colors. But you can also take like, a, in this case, I might take a color pencil and just add a little bit of color here and there just to give it a little pop. And they're easy to frame. Yeah, you can frame them, turn them into cards. And you might even explore printing on fabric. All right. And what about this? This is, is uh, This is silk dye painting. That, that seems really mm -hmm. delicate. It's, what did you call these little knots? French knots. This is really fiber art. A lot of fiber artists are making some really fine art these days. You're not limited to your, you know, grandmother's artwork, uh, uh, needlework. So this, what I did with this was I painted the background with dyes. This is on silk. And then I put a layer of wax and I carved into the wax. I just scratched into the wax and made these fine lines. And then I kind of crackled the wax and then shoved more dye into the cracks. And then I steam set it for permanency. And then after I washed and rinsed it dry, I just put some backing on it and highlighted it with uh, just basic stitching, nothing fancy. And how much, how, how long did this whole process take? Way too long. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the stitching is what took a long time. Oh, I'm and it's sure. hard on the, it was hard on my hands, but um, this one doesn't have as much stitching on it as the other pieces I've done. Okay, you can also stitch beads on it if you want. You don't have to stitch anything, but you can do whatever you want. This is the okay. traditional uh, silk dye painting. Uh -huh. And this one, you use these uh, resist, this resist applicator. And inside here, you have the um, water-based resist. It's kind of like a paste. And you draw these fine lines. When I teach this class, a lot of people will say they can't draw, so we trace. So I'll show you how to trace, how to do design placement. And we draw these fine lines, we let it dry, we uh, heat set it real quickly. And then you take a brush and liquid acid dyes and you put it here. And what happens is the dye flows to the line and stops. Think of that as acting like a dye. Okay. And then once it's done, you um, have to wrap it in a careful, uh, special way and steam set it for three hours. For how many hours? Three hours. Okay. okay. The um, acid dye gives silk the most brilliant colors. So right now... That's what you have behind you, right? Mm -hmm. So all this is um, done the same method and these are all acid dyes on silk. So you get the, the really beautiful sheen on it. Very lovely. And then Very these are nice. washed and dried and then you can collage it, you can mount it on canvas, you can wear it. Um, this was just an example I mounted on canvas. This one has salt, okay, when the dye is still wet, you can throw salt on it and it pulls the dye, it makes these marks, okay. Right. This part is corn syrup. When the dye was wet, I put colored corn syrup on it yeah. and it pushed and pulled and did weird things. Very so nice. since I like this background, I put it on here and then I had this piece I had done. So I put it on here and then I stitched 
I also stitch around the fish and from the back I sew Bring some it out, really. cotton and this is kind of puffy. 3D. Okay. 3D. What about okay. this here now? This is polymer clay. Excuse me. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of things with polymer clay that you can't do with regular clay. Um, for example, swirls. You can't get that with clay. It's kind of tricky, but with this you can get some really delicate, intricate swirls. Looks like it's almost liquid. Mm -hmm. And can you still sign up? Hold on, just a second. Yeah. That's okay. Um, so with polymer clay, you can get some really tiny, detailed things. You you do need like a you know like a pin or a needle or or a tweezer or something, but you can really put some tiny pieces. It'll stay. It has impact. Um, you bake these in the oven for 30 minutes to an hour at a very low temperature. It comes out basically hard. And okay. these over here are the same thing? These are all the same. You can make them metallic looking by adding mica powder. You can get as fine as this. Um, you can do a checkered pattern. And you can make what they call caning, make little tubes of different colors and slice it and put it on that. I just want to see the day. Just me. Oh, I'm sorry. And then you can make it 3D like this. And they also have ones that mimic uh, granite rock. So this is extremely lightweight. You can feel it. If, oh if that was a real like, rock, you're, you know. What is this made out of? Just polymer clay. It's wow. this piece called granite. Okay. And some are metallic. And this is, once again, the, the granite ones. Um, some people make buttons. so you Very can, light. Doesn't mm -hmm. feel granite at so all. Some people make buttons, so you can put the buttons on here. You can also combine it with other jewelry items. Okay. And oh, let's go around yeah. here. Yeah. And, and last, we have the wire wrapped. Can I get you over here just a minute? I want to ask you this. What about the... This is called wire wrapping jewelry. It's one of the most ancient uh, methods of jewelry making. And basically you take wire and you take super thin wire like this. Mm -hmm. This is 28 gauge. Gauges come in, uh, means different thicknesses. And it's a matter of wrapping it around. And sometimes wrap it three times, sometimes twice, sometimes three, twice, you know, kind of like a pattern. Mm -hmm. So you have different kinds of weaves, and this is actually woven oh, right here. Oh, okay. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Let's get this a little closer. Look at that. That's really unique. How fine this is. Very nice. Yeah. And this is all done with the wire. It's all wire. You do need some tools to help you with. Um, this one is, I just took different color wires and wrapped it and wove it, uh, added some beads. You can keep it simple by doing something like this. This is just multiples of the same design, just strung together. Rings can be made. And when we do the workshop, we're probably going to start out real simple and make something really simple. Okay. So you can got, kind of get the idea, the feel of the metal. Right. And then um, we may even proceed to taking scrap metal and working with that, adding wire, practicing attaching things with wire. Okay. Very nice, and this is still the same. This is in process right now. Um, I'm trying to add as many woven parts as possible and see how far I can push it. So you're gonna add that and make mm -hmm. it into something that no, looks... No, it's gonna be like this, but I'm just gonna keep adding layers oh, and layers I and see, see how, so you can how, see how, how far I can go okay. with it, yeah. Okay. How Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Thank Good. you very oh, much. Oh, you're welcome. All right. People, you can have her now. There you go. <laughs>